Dang, Instagram just not, not playing with me today, huh? Yikes. Hey, I appreciate y'all for hanging in there. Um, I guess since I have my intro music, Instagram cut me off. So now I know I can't play um, music at the beginning, huh? Dang. Well, let's get Alexis back in here. That was weird. It, the Instagram live pretty much just stopped and was like, we think you're playing music or showing music that's not yours, which um, I was playing some MJ earlier, so. Maybe that's why. Let me add Alexis back in and then we can keep it going. There you go. Thanks, Nate. Appreciate you. Yo, Thanks. so since I played the Michael Jackson up front, they stopped my Instagram live. They thought I was no, trying to promote. That wasn't it. That you just beyonce Instagram live, boy. You just shut down the whole <laughs> That's so please go back again through your background a little bit. No, absolutely. And then, and then talk about this backstage past to life. I love that. Yes. Okay. So hey, everybody, my name is Alexis Rogers. I am an anchor, reporter, content uh, producer, maker, host of my own show here in Cincinnati at the NBC affiliate at WLWT. Um, I've had a kind of an interesting journey here, originally from the Chicago area, went from there to Missouri to Arkansas <laughs> to Cincinnati where I am now um, and it's been a great ride I, I love I love meeting people I was telling V before that the cool thing about my job is and really about the path that I've chosen through life is that I get a backstage pass to life the good the bad the ugly the great <laughs> um, and that's been awesome because I get a chance to meet really cool people I've met Nobel Peace Prize winners. I've met Oprah. I've met wow. so many cool people that always drop mad wisdom on me. And I love that. It's like, I love to learn, especially when it's things that we can make things better. Um, a lot of times I share those things with my girls in my mentorship program. It used to be called Imagine. Now it's called Lisa's Girls. So I do a lot of public speaking and things like that. And we'll talk about that too, because We'll talk about being within your purpose, but also understanding right. when to sit down somewhere. So um, <laughs> I'm still trying you. to learn that. So. Hello, look, me too. Mama <laughs> said, boop, you need to go ahead and sit down. All right. Um, so yeah, so we just, it's it's been a cool ride and, and um, I'm just really excited to learn more. It's crazy. B, I cannot believe I've been in this thing for 10 years. Now that's crazy. 10 years? 10 years. 2010, my first day of college was also my first day at the uh nbc affiliate in columbia missouri wow and that's and you but, went to mizzou I, for hey, people who don't know I what's there so <laughs> i know there's a couple of mizzou people on here so i know they're gonna Come stand on, up right there look <laughs> look we the mafia don't play with us oh my god <laughs> <laughs> so that's how you started but i know you said you did journalism in high school too right so did were you prepared to go into into this career prior to college you know it's funny because i don't know if you remember but i played junior olympic volleyball and mm -hmm. that was my focus. But I went to Nequa Valley High School and um, they had a broadcast journalism program. And that's cool. And here's the thing. And I, I started to really get into education and all my teachers out there, like mad props to you all, because you guys fight for all these cool things for us to be able to do. And I had a great teacher there and she fought to have broadcast journalism, not just like newspaper mm -hmm. or written. And so from my sophomore year to my senior year, I was doing things that most people would be doing in college. And that wow. helped me understand what I wanted to do. I mean, I knew I loved to talk to people. I knew I loved to ask questions. Um, I remember, and actually that's how I got one of my scholarships, two of my scholarships. I did a mini documentary about teen violence in Chicago. I went to an mm -hmm. alternative school over on the West side and compared it to some of the alternative programs in the suburbs and what that looks like. But to be able to do that type of work, you know, and not even be 18, I mean, mm -hmm. it just opened my eyes up to so much. So yes, that was my, my start. And I, I remember, listen, I remember telling <laughs> my dad, like, I think I want to try out Mizzou. And he was, and we were on a recruiting visit at the time. And he was like, girl, what? Listen, we, I didn't paid all this money for club volleyball. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Mizzou who? And it ended up working out. I did end up getting an academic scholarship. And it really, I feel like my time at Missouri really like sent the trajectory for what I thought I wanted to do mm -hmm. on and, and forth. So. So at Niqua, was there a high school program or it was just like there a was. class that you did? Okay. It was called Wildcat Weekly. 
And okay. uh, the cool thing was that we competed. So we competed in journalism competitions with RTDNA. Mm -hmm. And that led to a $10,000 scholarship for me to go to Missouri, wow. uh, which was awesome. We got mentors. I was able to go and see some of the people that we would see on like NBC Chicago and ABC Chicago and ask them questions. And we did live broadcasts. Because at the time, since I was an athlete, I thought I wanted to do sports. Mm -hmm. And then I realized that um, you had to love all sports. And I was like, oh, no, I'm straight. <laughs> no <laughs> <laughs> no nah, nah, not this bad look it's and the women's pay structure too but, Ugh. listen so but even, the funny thing is i'm outside all the time now with my job now but um <laughs> but yeah so like that was what when i realized that missouri was such a good school for it and it was kind of like an easy transition when it came to that because it was all about weeding out people. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. When I started Missouri, they said, look to your left, look to your right. Most likely only one of you will be here. And it was mm -hmm. true. You know, when I had spoke at my graduation, I think I graduated with like 89 people in my broadcast class. And it wow. started with more than 1500 in that one sequence. I mean, they weren't lying and that's on air and off air people. So you learn quickly that you have to really be ready to, to get it. And I think that we'll talk about that of how that's progressed over time in, in this industry. And I want you guys to know too, for the ones who are tuning in, if you've never been on one of these before, this is meant to be interactive, right? So ask Alexis as many questions as you want oh, yeah. uh, about her career, journey, her relationships, and she's a wife. Um, I told, I, I asked her before, she said it's not, it's not off limits. So uh, feel free <laughs> to ask her any questions or put it in the question box and then we can uh, give it to her then. So you got to Mizzou, were you involved in any programs or anything too that, that helped you out um, for where you are now for your career? Absolutely. Um, I was the president of the National Association of Black Journalists at Missouri for a couple of years. We actually won chapter of the year. I was really proud of that. Hey. A lot of people didn't realize that we had one of the largest chapters in the entire country. We had more than 100 Black journalism students wow. in one chapter. So we were really proud of that. Um, I led that group for a while. I was involved in our Black student government. Um, I was also a tour guide, so I was that crazy person. As clumsy as I am, let me tell you something. Thank God, good. I'm clumsy as a mug, but guess what? My tours were bomb, though. My <laughs> tours were bomb, okay? So I uh, I was a tour guide, loved that. Um, and my dad used to say, like, girl, you like a Jamaican. You just have 50 million jobs, and that's exactly what it was. I was working at the TV station. I was working for Newsy.com. I was also working at the NPR affiliate wow. while doing all these other things, so... Um, and I still have my girls program. I would do it at, at, at high schools and middle schools in Columbia locally. So, and actually I started that in, in high school through Girl Scouts. That was my Girl Scout Gold Award. So, wow. And how did you start that? So young giving back, right? In high school. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thank my parents for that because we have the type of household that you came to dinner. I have two younger sisters and um, there would always be another person, two other people, three other people, you know, at the table my dad mentored a lot my mom mentored a lot matter of fact not only was i at bolenbrook all the time but my daddy actually mentored a whole bunch of people from bolenbrook <laughs> yearbook that's why okay <laughs> and um but it was great and, and i understood it helped me very quickly understand that life is so much bigger than me mm -hmm. and what good is wisdom if it's not shared right right so that was that was awesome and i just kind of continued that and i love that's purpose work i love doing purpose work i think that that's it's dope because I, I learned a lot. Let me tell you, some of my girls, uh, my first class of girls, everybody has graduated. Actually, some are on to their master's, which is crazy. Wow. Um, and I look at what they're doing and I'm like, man, like, I just get so inspired by them every single day. Like one of my mentees mm -hmm. is an entire midday personality in L.A. on the radio. And that's one thing you can learn, right? I think people think when you're giving back, right, the people aren't pouring into you. But just as you're <laughs> pouring into them, they're pouring into you, too. So you're always learning. Oh, my gosh. You're always, and if you're not learning, then you hustling backwards. Yeah. Oh, that's what right. it is. Right. <laughs> you gotta be learning. <laughs> I'm just writing down these gems while you're, while you're, oh. talking, while you're saying them, by the way. So if you see me just looking, I'm not just like looking out the window. I'm, I'm typing. So no, I'm just really. writing the stuff that you're saying, which is amazing. I love this. So you talked about being purposeful, right? So mm -hmm. I'm assuming that's stemming from God. Absolutely. So have you always been in, in church growing up? You know, I did. I was always. My mom was my Sunday school teacher. Okay. I do have to say that my relationship really got deep with him really in college. You know, I, I lost my mom to breast cancer uh, my first year of, of college. That changed mm -hmm. a lot. You know, it's funny because Imagine started as being this like girls mentorship, Christian mentorship opportunity to help girls understand why they should save themselves for marriage and mm -hmm. you know how they can uplift each other because sometimes and I tell my girls this all the time 
sometimes we're not taught how to have relationships with other women and mm -hmm. it's one of the most powerful things when women link up together it's amazing and I think it's just a matter of learning how to do that and sometimes we fault people for not knowing how but then the question I always ask is who who taught you if nobody right. taught you how are you even supposed to know you know what I'm right. saying so I digress but um you know that that really changed me you know here I am uh I was very openly talking about the fact that being celibate was important to me but also understanding mm -hmm. who I was within God you know was important to me and so here it is I made these life decisions and all of a sudden five days after I turned 19 I'm all of a sudden the co-guardian of two girls and wow. that was different that was very very different and I, I, my parents God bless them I mean we were always very close my sisters and I are five and nine years apart so you know we were going through life a wow. little different and yeah. I had this time where like I was just mad at God oh I was y'all yeah, I was mad at God. I was yeah. so mad at him because I was like, wait, you know, anybody who knew my mom knew that she was a very, very faithful servant of the Lord. Like, let me tell you, my mom didn't even wear pants out in public, only skirts and dresses. Are you serious? Oh, very serious. Wow. Child, my tambourine game is strong, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> but even with that, she really taught me a lot of things and how to love myself. And especially, you know, growing up in a predominantly white, suburb but the, but when you're involved in very diverse activities and like all your family is like in the city or in diverse places you have this like I love W.E.B. Du Bois's double consciousness but it's almost I feel like for black women it's almost like a triple consciousness because it's just like okay like how do I operate and I felt like I was really struggling with a lot of that um coming out because here it is that I was always an athlete I'm not that anymore I was always this you know oldest daughter that I could just focus on my lane and that was not me anymore like I'm responsible for other people now mm -hmm. and I think that's really when my relationship with God started to get real like I started to get real with God I used to be like Lord you don't want me I'm a hot mess he'd be like girl let me give you your hot mess where you at come let me sprinkle a little bit of me on there so that that was amazing and I think that that's what's helped me navigate what my purpose has been you know thus mm -hmm. far because now I understand that there's no separation between the two. You know, ask mm -hmm. anybody who I've covered. I mean, my partners here, you know, whether they be the photographers I work with or whatever, they know. Like, if I go into a house and don't come out in 30 minutes, they know what's going on. I mean, how <laughs> am I supposed to come to this mother who just lost her second son to gun violence and not pray right. with her? And right. I'm asking her to share time with me. All I know how to be is me. So mm -hmm. I know how to pray. Oh, I can pray real well. So I'm going to do that. <laughs> And there's something about breaking down humanity and showing yourself. And that's what I mean by having a backstage pass of life. Think about it. Think about like the hottest concert you've ever been to. And you go backstage and you see everybody doing everything. Mm -hmm. And there's like, you see the parts moving. And that's the part of my life that I'm really thankful for. Wow. So you pretty much got a little bit of psychology in your job too. Like you said, right? You're dealing with a lot of trauma, right? And I'm sure trauma. you can kind of be like a first responder pretty much too, right? Because they're reporting on it. And they're just like, excuse me, ma'am, like... <laughs> Yeah. We don't want you in our business, please. <laughs> Listen, it, it, it's interesting when you have people's respect. When you don't have people's respect, your job becomes a lot different. Arkansas taught me that. I grew up a lot in Little Rock. Little Rock grew me up real, real fast. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because here it is, you know, Missouri was great, but I was still in my comfort zone. You know, we were still in the Midwest. A lot of people were from our area, so that was fine. And then I got to Missouri. I mean, I got to Arkansas. Ciao. That was... <laughs> That was, that was different. And guess what? <laughs> to this day, I've met some of the best people I've ever, ever met in Arkansas. But it was a wow. cultural, like, whip me up into shape. Because now I'm no longer a student. Now I'm a real deal journalist dealing with people. It got to the point where in certain communities, especially where I had my program, people were calling me before they called 911. Mm -hmm. And that's a very big responsibility. I mean, I had the chief of police on speed dial. We had a very good relationship. I, I helped with their mentorship program for girls. And that's what it takes. It's, I don't think people realize that if you're going to have a relationship, you have to do the real part first. Mm -hmm. It's not the part that looks cute. Like, you, you got to really want to be there. People feel that, you know? Um, even now, I, I'm not even in Little Rock anymore. And I still check up on people because I genuinely care. Mm -hmm. I, I really do. And I would hope that if I was on the other end of that, they would care about me too. How do you develop that, right? How do you develop when you go into a new community? You're like, maybe I should develop a relationship with the chief of police. Not because, like, he's the chief, right? But, like, mm -hmm. I know I'm going to be working with this person, so, like, I might as well reach out. Also, I know there might be a difference in age, right? People are maybe afraid to reach out to 
the what is it the the provost or the chancellor of their university or people mm-hmm. who are just like the head right yeah what what was instilled in you that you were like you know I really don't you know I really don't care who he is but I need to have a relationship right and, and mm-hmm. you just like plain reach out even though he might be like I don't want to talk to you right what yeah. what was that instilled in you to like be able to foster those relationships you know what I think it comes from like having a, a junior olympic athlete background right like when you wanted something you had to just go get it mm-hmm. like like you didn't ask permission you just had to bust up in there and be like okay how you doing nice to meet you wonderful hey y'all okay so i'm here (laughs) and the first question i always ask is how can i serve you because Mm. it's really hard to i i think in my opinion i think it's really hard to deny someone's authenticity when they have a heart to serve and i and i do i have a heart to serve you know i've been trying to explain to my student loan people that this is a public service yes Mm -hmm. (laughs) and so you know i mean it really is because i'm working for you you see so many news stations that say that Mm -hmm. you know working for you working for you but it really it really is you know working for you um and it and it comes from understanding you know i i thank god for the things that he's allowed me to do in my life and and experience Mm -hmm. in my life because they've been tough but man did it make me strong i mean I can sit here and look at somebody who just lost their loved one and talk to them because I know what that feels like. Right. I mean, I spend time with my own family situation. I, I know what it's like to love somebody locked up. I know what's, what I know. I know what trauma is like, but I also know what triumph is like. And so I think when you lead with that, whether you're in journalism or you're trying to start a business, some of the best business owners I've ever met. Oh my goodness. They are some of their, their sense of, like reading people and not like reading people like I'm gonna tell you off but like reading people like looking at them and saying hmm okay this is where you're coming from this is what I can do to help improve you because Mm -hmm. that's the whole point of a conversation right Mm -hmm. like it's not so that way I can just listen and listen and I mean that's that's a speech that's no conversation like yeah when you have to be giving someone something and so I think once I started to learn that I was like okay like this is just me. When they when people see you stick around, you have to have consistency. If you have no consistency, then they're just like, well, they're just here because I for right now. That's mm-hmm. all right. Like that's always how I've I've been. Um, I'm loyal to a fault. I see some of my really good friends on this thing. They'll probably tell you I'm loyal to a fault. Okay, <laughs> um, but loyalty goes a long way, especially when you have people's realities in your hands. Yeah, and what about even like coming back from a tough time, right? Like. From the passing of a of a parent, right? Most people couldn't even imagine that. Um, dealing with someone who's locked up, dealing with any any situation that's like you know you could lose your job or anything that happens, right? How do you bring yourself in a better mental space to just push forward rather than just crawling under a rock and be like, I can't believe this is happening to me. Why me, right? Like mm-hmm. I'm just gonna just sit here and like, which it's okay to grieve, right? And it's okay to take your time, but when I, I just felt like throughout your whole career, it seemed like you never stopped, right? You just kept pushing forward always like you had positivity optimism around you regardless of what what happened right what was that to that kept you pushing and kept you going you know it's funny when God puts people in your life because this is the time where you have to really check who you around and I'm not talking about I think a lot of times we talk about friendships and boundaries in those Mm -hmm. in the terms of keeping people out but I'm talking Mm -hmm. about it in the terms of who you have in like who's in who's all in and I mean, I was blessed with just great friends, especially in college. Um, Oh, if you could see the times I tried to stop. (laughs) (laughs) If you could see the breakdown moments, for real. I don't even think I really understood what mental health was until Mm -hmm. really probably like a year after mom passed when I realized that I didn't have to be the... um, the pseudo personality of being a superwoman that people Mm -hmm. just tell you all the time, you know, my godmother helped me a lot. You know, I have another mother figure. Her name's Pix. She helped me a ton at at just being honest with the way that I felt, you know, therapy was great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I fought therapy. Look, y'all like here's (laughs) me and here's therapy. And I was like, nah, I ain't doing it. Wow. Literally. Oh, I was, I was not about it at all. My dad, (laughs) drug me up in there kicking and screaming I was like look I got stuff to do I got this to do I'm mm-hmm. like I don't feel like this and it was work but it was I had to realize I had to get to know myself mm-hmm. I, I, I was so I'm very goal oriented and it's funny because my pastor recently I was talking to my husband and we were looking at the sermon and my pastor was talking about the difference between 
um, man, I mean, I get this wrong. He was talking about the difference between planning and preparation. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, boom. Yeah. Well, like what's this one? <laughs> like, right, like right in my head. And that's true because I love a plan, but I had to realize that I loved a plan because I, in some terms, was probably a control freak because I was mm -hmm. trying to control my situation. But if I control my situation, how do I allow something greater than me to come in and change my situation? All I can do is be prepared. And that I think is really, that helped me, um, especially when going through uh, therapy, child. Mizzou got the best and the worst of me. And what, but I, what I mean is I was always kind of out and about and, you know, in front of people and they saw a very put together person. And I think, what I what I'm thankful for is that I have friends that when the doors closed and I was on the floor crying, mm -hmm. they were like, you know, that's all right. Not only is that all right, but let's talk through why you're doing this, because mm -hmm. if we don't understand where this is coming from, then we don't know how to, to sift through. You had great people around you, man. And it's funny because I look at all the people who stood by me. Um, you know, we got I Reggie and I got married last June mm -hmm. and it was all those people. It was every last one of them. I, I lived with the same girls pretty much all throughout college. And wow. I mean, I don't think that's by accident, you know? And it, and it's it's something when you're able to just love on each other like that. Mm -hmm. That means a lot. I don't know. That just that means a lot. I don't I don't know if, if anybody out there who feels like they're always the person that people come to them, but when you have a group of givers like, mm -hmm. get you some givers, okay? Because <laughs> then they don't always be taking from you. They be giving yes. to you, too, you know? And we had to understand our love language. Like, I got some friends. I One of my best friends, love her to pieces. She's in med school right now. I know I'm not going to call her, but maybe once every other week. Because that's her love language. Like, that, <laughs> you know? Like, we had to understand. And it's so interesting because my mom used to say, you have to understand the capacities of relationships. And when you understand the capacity of a relationship, you know how to operate. There yeah. is no like, well, like for instance, there's some people I will only do lunch with. They're not coming to my house. We're not, we're not chopping it up on the phone. <laughs> and that's okay because the glory of like our relationship is that we have bomb lunch mm -hmm. and, we, and we vibe and we network and it's great. I have some people that, you know, they'll come to my house. We'll kick it. We might not do anything. We might not talk about business at all. We might just vibe on music. Like, I, when you respect the, the capacities of your relationships, you can enjoy them so much more. You don't look at them like, oh, man, well, I'm just so close with this person or, you know, I'm not close with this person. And even in my business relationships, I can understand how to operate with people. Mm -hmm. Like, there's some people I know, they can't hear me unless we're at happy hour. There's just something chemically in their mind, but they cannot hear me unless we at happy hour. Like, did you, I don't even drink for real, but they can be at happy hour to feel happy and that's fine. You know, okay. I got other people who, you know, we can, like, you, you know, today, you and I were just chopping it up. We hadn't talked in a long time, really yeah. since we both pledged, actually. Right, for real. Oh, look, we hold sororities and we did, yeah. we, but you know, we just, right, right right. I mean, there's just some right. people that are, you know, that are like that, so. I've, I've enjoyed understanding how to maneuver in that way. And do you think that understanding yourself played a key part in finding um, your husband who you're with now? Oh, child. <laughs> Listen, it's funny. Okay, so I'll tell you the very short version of how Reggie and I met. So mm -hmm. Reggie was also in journalism at Mizzou. Uh, my dad's a Kappa, like a diehard, a diehard nuke. Like my daddy still think he's 21. Okay, so <laughs> when he moved me to Missouri, um, you know, he found nukes and he was like, you know, they were helping, you know, all, all the fraternities and sororities like help me move in and all that. So he had met a lot of nukes and um, we have this thing called Fall Fest. And as I was walking to the choir, first of all, let me time out, story time out. I was just excited to see all these black people, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, we in here. It's lit. I got to go to somebody else's <laughs> school. This is my school? Okay, this is great. And it was cool because they had all these different organizations. You know how it is when you're like a freshman and you're like, you know, I'm just excited. Everybody's new. Everybody look cute. I'm real skinny still. This is great, <laughs> you know? And um, I saw him outside of the the area where they were going to do the step show and he had his cane. And I was like, girl, this is how, look, y'all, 
I'm gonna put y'all up on game. This is how you know you feeling yourself as a freshman because you say things <laughs> that in your right mind, when you think about it, you'd be like, girl, why, why you say that? Why I say that? But <laughs> I I walked past them and I was like, oh, I like your cane. And then like, I left. <laughs> Child, I left. <laughs> Listen, when we when I tell the story and he tells the story, it just, it's different. But regardless, <laughs> we were really good friends all throughout Um all throughout college we never dated I was in a serious mm. relationship in college and he was too and we never dated but we always were friends and it, like I said he's in the journalism school there's only so many of us so we always stay connected um he lost a parent too so he always just kind of understood me on that level and I appreciated that friendship like it was mm -hmm. it was a dope friendship never crossed the line we wait until I'm in Little Rock, Arkansas, and he is in Kansas, y'all. We talking about nine hours, okay? Nine hours. And we broke, okay? Because we don't talk about <laughs> the first salaries. We was broke, all right? <laughs> and um, that's, I actually called, get this, and Callie knows I'm going to tell the story. She told it at the wedding as well. But I, Callie and I were on the phone, and we were talking about this article that we had read that said most people find their significant other by the time they're 27. Like, either they have met their significant other or they've met someone who's going to introduce them to their significant other. I don't even remember who wrote the article, but we were talking about it, right? Okay. And so we go back to our Rolodex, like, who we know? And what's our list? <laughs> so then Reggie came up, and I was like, oh, my God, because I love hooking people up. Like, I got a, I got a strong track record. Now, if you ask Reggie, oh, I need you. <laughs> but, but, girl, I got you. Okay. Because I love seeing people happy. Anyway, mm -hmm. so his name came up, and I was like, what about Reggie Wilson? And she was like, I mean, we didn't really talk like that for real, but I mean, I'm open. You know, I was like, straight like that. That's all I need. Called mm. him. We were on FaceTime for four hours. Wow. I told him I wanted to hook him up with my friend, but I didn't tell him who it was because I needed to interview him. Like, I'm a journalist. I need to interview you. I need to know what your intentions are, sir. <laughs> what, what's your situation? Okay. <laughs> and he thought I was talking about me. Oh, and so we get to the end of the FaceTime, bitch. We on FaceTime, y'all. We get to the end of the FaceTime. He's like, "So I'm, I'm like, I'm feeling you," and I was like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, no, that wasn't the plan." <laughs> y'all, I got on that phone, off that phone so quick. I got off that phone. So Are you quick. serious? I got off the phone, y'all, and I was on FaceTime. I got off the phone. So that was funny. I mean, we laugh about it now because I think like Missouri was playing Arkansas where you were talking about the game or whatever. And, uh, you know, he's a sports anchor reporter. So he's all about sports and I love sports. And child, I called Callie and we bust up laughing. She asked me, she was like, you know, have you ever thought about, I was like, oh, I thought he was cute. But you know, if I look, if one of us need to do something because we can't just let him go through the, through the cracks. Mm -hmm. Only so many out here. Okay. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and from there we just, we were like, okay, we're friends. And we started talking and he just, he, <laughs> Reggie was very pointed with me. Like he didn't play any games. He, he courted me. you. <laughs> he called me and said, so I would like to court you. Like, do you know what that? Oh, means? he said that straight. Oh, no, no. He said that like in 2014, he was like, yeah, so I would like to court you. Do you wow. know what that means? So this is my intentions. Yes. I'm talking about marriage. Yeah. I'm not, it doesn't have to be tomorrow, but yeah, and I'm over here looking at the phone like, skip, skirt, <laughs> what? <laughs> because, you know, you never hear of, um, you know, people in our generation talking about like courting one right. another. But this comes back to that whole standards and boundaries and what are you letting in and what are you letting out, right? And um, and we and we dated and we never put any pressure on it. And people always ask me like, how was it being in a long distance relationship? And in our business, it's very common. Mm -hmm. um, but we... The distance sucked, but as far as our relationship, it was solid. We were just so, we we didn't, all the, back in the day, what we used to call in high school, all the fugazi stuff. Mm -hmm. like, we didn't do that. Like, it was just, I enjoy talking to you. You enjoy talking to me. We laugh, we joke, we have a good time. And that's what it was. I mean, this dude drove nine hours after he worked for like 12 to surprise me at my doorstep, like for Valentine's Day. And the then it, had dinner took a nap, drove back to work nine wow. hours. I mean, when you have people in your life like that, that's when you, you start to, like when I was with him, it felt like I was at home. Mm -hmm. And so I think that it taught me a lot because I was very guarded before then. You know, everybody goes through heartbreak, especially as you're trying to climb up the professional ladder. And in journalism, you see so many people who are divorced. I mean, so mm -hmm. many of my coworkers are not married, 
divorced, have sworn off love, whatever. Is that just because of the contracts and moving to different cities all the time? I think it's that. I think it's the nature of the job. I think it's the always being up and at it. And, you know, I think that it's cool. I never thought I would date somebody in the business. Actually, I saw, I said that I wasn't going to date somebody in the business, but God knew that I was just being stupid. So thank you for not taking that away. But, um, you know, he understands where I'm coming from and I understand where he's coming from because our schedules are crazy. Like, are you, you both are in the same city now though, right? You both live we in Cincinnati. Are. So that's, okay. So here we go fast forward like five years. And I'm like, oh, we in the same city now. We thought we were doing something. We was 45 <laughs> minutes away. And then he ended up being in the same city. And so now we, we work for competing stations. But it's something when you make a, a choice of what your priorities are going to be. And actually, to be very honest with you, um, during this quarantine, it showed me what my priorities need to now be. Because mm -hmm. they change. Like, your priorities change as your wisdom changes, right? So... You know, now we've been quarantined, we've been working from home. We've seen each other more now than we have, like, in our entire relationship. And I'm like, wow, I still, I still love you. You fire. I'm, <laughs> you legit my best friend. We keep on our walks, all of that, girl. We just, you know, we're like an old little married couple. But, um, but yeah, like, now I understand why there needs to be a balance and why some of the people that I look up to the most have a balance. Like, there's winning in balances, like, I think sometimes we forget, you know, I think I saw something and you probably saw it too. Everybody's like, you know, I want to do this during quarantine. I want to do this. And that's great. Mm -hmm. Always dream. If you stop dreaming, then there's something, there's something wrong. You should always mm -hmm. be dreaming. But, you know, there's power in patience. There really is. And there's power in, in learning how to step back and breathe. I didn't realize I needed to step back and breathe. I mean, my first year here, I emceed and spoke at over 70 different events. My second year, I was at 65. The third year, we were getting married. I was like, I'm going a, I'm to a step back. I did my list proud. <laughs> I was still at 56 events. I mean, wow. and you know, that's it. That's cool for the job, but it's like, right. all right. But where I didn't even realize how tired I was. And so we got a chance to just step back, you know. Um, so I'm thankful that, you know, God was gracious enough with me so I can learn how to be gracious with myself. Because I love if that. I'm not gracious with myself, child. <laughs> I appreciate your transparency too, right? <laughs> like, I always, like, want people to know, right? Even though I want this to be about business sometimes and learning how people can do their programs and opportunities, there's also a big mental and emotional component to everything that we do. And I think you just hit on it, right? It's knowing yourself, if you're able to find a great partner, like, you know, but that person, that person supports you, you support them, you both are very honest and doing your endeavors together, right? Like, that is an integral part yeah. of, of your career, right? You have a teammate. I mean, I, I won my first Emmy ever this year. And Ooh, congrats. But, thank you. Reggie was the loudest one in the room, child. He was right <laughs> there. Yep. Yeah. Bravo. And I was like, <laughs> you know, that's, it means so much. I mean, well, B, when did you feel like you started to really get comfortable with yourself as you grew as you know a business person i mean because you girl mm -hmm. you be out here you gonna own the world i'm just trying to, like, I'm <laughs> Please. Just trying to be be a part okay i think actually when i started therapy a couple years ago i think two years ago i started to learn more about myself and why i did things and why i did my actions and like why i was such a busybody right i was like am i am i trying to avoid something or do i just mm. like being productive right like hello what, what's going on and i think when i went through therapy and like you said you got to sit back and then just take a more introspective look and not be around people and just be around yourself. And I think also component of that is when you sit down, you start to listen to God now, right? Like God's telling you things and now you can hear it because you're by yourself and you're sitting yeah. down rather than you're just constantly moving. I think that's when I got to like be a little bit more comfortable with like, oh, I like to do this. And if other mm -hmm. people don't, that's okay, right? right. It's, so it's learning to accept things that like are not okay and learning about yourself and then just like knowing that like we're human, we make mistakes, but we have to, you know, we have to go through life and learn all these lessons and then also just develop who we are. And if we're different than someone else, that's okay because God didn't make everybody the same, right? Come on. Come on. That's good. Did you want to go, like, did you tell yourself you needed to go to therapy or like, was it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I told, I told myself. So I had a lot of, I had a lot of friends who had like, who were already in therapy and I don't think I was against therapy, but I was definitely like, I got to go this before. every month right? Like, I got to do what? How much is it? And like, what are we going to talk about? Right? Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, do I have to like, what do I have to do? Do I have to be like messed up to go to therapy? Like, what's going right. on? And I Why think don't we tell ourselves that, B? I, I don't do know. That? And I went and I was like, I went to um, 
understand why I like toxic traits in a relationship. That's mm-hmm. that's why I went. And I was like, it Girl. takes two to tango, right? So I went for that. Sometimes three. And I'm talking about mm. your alter ego. <laughs> <laughs> Facts. And then now I'm just like, there's so many other things that I'm, I'm unraveling that I never even knew about. So even if you don't think you're going to talk about something, there's always something to talk about in your life because your life is always ever changing and always evolving. So there's always something to learn. And it's great when you have an unbiased opinion who can kind of mm. help you through that. Isn't it amazing how when you grew, you helped those grow around you? Isn't that, isn't that crazy? Yes. Even, not yes. even trying to like be, you know, like that, but like there's something about when you are healthy, like you almost require people to be healthy around you because now you know what it looks like. Like there's power exactly. in that. Child, there's child, there's some people who didn't make the cut. And I, it's I'm hard saying. not to feel guilty. If, I had a hard time not feeling guilty about that at first. You know, there were some people where I was like, man, I really rocked with you at, at one point in my life. Mm-hmm. But I couldn't, we couldn't be what we were at this stage. Right. That's not to say that I don't still got love for you, but like, we just, we don't, that's not the capacity of our relationship. Mm-hmm. It's just not. I look, Kamaya put a, a comment in here. I think Kamaya, you put, uh, I think it was therapy for black girls. There's a link in our group chat. Yeah. I think that's actually how I found my therapist. But she said like, because, you know, in the black community, we've been conditioned to think, right? Only crazy people can go to therapy. Right. No, is, you're going to go crazy if you don't go to therapy. Y'all better get yourself some help. So I haven't been, I need to go back to these questions. So uh, first of all, we heard like loving this interview. I, I see Callie and Mandy praising you all through here. Oh, thank Kamaya you. said, uh, Alexis, you were speaking gems. And so the first question we got was from uh, Daily Dose of Brit. And she said, Alexis, being in the business for 10 years, how are you managing stress in the workplace? I'm only a few years in and it gets draining sometimes. Absolutely. It totally gets draining. Let me tell y'all, when I was uh, leaving Little Rock, I think I had hit one of my lower points um, because I had this whole thing with the FOP. It was kind of racially charged. It was just all, all this this thing. And I had to realize that I needed to understand my own worth. Mm-hmm. And I needed to understand that that was not negotiable. Like, at all. You mm-hmm. know, my dad... He, he was always in finance and he always taught me how to negotiate. And for some reason I was starting to back off of that. No, like I needed to not be abrasive, but be sure of myself to say, you know what, mm-hmm. actually like, this is good. Like, this is good journalism. I'm, I'm getting better. Y'all just crazy. That's okay though. Cause that <laughs> could make a good story. If you just keep talking to me, you know, I've had people who have said to me, um, Alexis, I don't, I didn't want to like you. <laughs> Mm-hmm. I tell people, I'm like, you might not have invited me, but I'm sure you invite me back after I'm done. That's right. <laughs> I tell people that all the time. And I think I had to just kind of get real with myself. There was a point in time I wasn't comfortable with being quiet with myself. I know that sounds wow. weird, but like, I wasn't comfortable with that. And I think I, it was because like you said, you have to be ready to like, say, okay, I'm not okay. And how do I go forth from this? Um, so yeah, I mean, you, you have to take a step back. I can honestly say now in my life, you know, Reggie's a really big part of helping me know when to step back because he mm-hmm. knows that I give my all in everything and he doesn't punish me for it, which I appreciate, but he, he graciously is like, Hey, so how long did you sleep yesterday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> When's the last time, you know? You, you loved yourself. Like, you know, <laughs> you had some ice cream lately. That's your happy I love place. that. Like, you know, and that's, you need that because I think you have to understand that the news is always going to happen. In this coronavirus age, I mean, it's constant. That first couple weeks was a little overwhelming. I had to turn mm-hmm. it off. I had to turn it off because I, if I'm not good, then I can't help you be good. So mm-hmm. I hope that answers your question. I love that. We got another question too by Overtime with OT. He said, while working in the news business, how do you and your husband find time for each other? Because those hours can be crazy, exclamation point. Mm-hmm. You know, our marriage parents were awesome. Um, and for anybody who even thinks that they want to get married or, you know, anything like that, like, please do premarital counseling, get like some folks that you really look up to, to be your accountability buddies. I mean, we can call our marriage parents at any given time and they'll give us the real and they'll hug us and love us afterwards. And we know that it's, you know, it's no problem. Um, And I wish I could remember the Amazon series that we did. um, And it's available on Amazon. It's really about relationships. Um, Man, I, I hate that I can't remember it, but if I do, I will put it out there. But regardless, we realize that being with each other is a choice. We have to choose each other every single day. If we don't choose each other, that's our fault. So, 
you know, there are certain times where people are like, hey, can you run by and do this? And old me would have did it. Me now, I'm like, uh-uh, we got two hours and I need to see Reggie before he goes to work. Like, that's a priority to me. Um, and same with him, you know, on his off days or on my off days. You know, we really make time for each other. And this quarantine has helped us understand that too. That, you know, when everything is gone and everything is done, it's still me and him. So, um, you know, that's been good. Actually, we recently did the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace University. We just graduated. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Congrats. Thank you. <laughs> and now our dreams look even different. And like, right. we love dreaming together and we love taking walks and like talking about like, what does that even mean? And like, okay, so like, what's our move here? And you know, like that's, it's exciting. It's like having a teammate, especially as we've been watching the last dance, you know, like, like mm -hmm. that's how our huddles be. We be having Wilson huddles, y'all. <laughs> Like, we'd be like, okay, all right, cool. So, Marriage huddle, and, game plan. Like, right, right. I'd be like, it's the third quarter, okay. <laughs> what we gonna do? Okay, so you go, you go set the pick? Okay, fantastic. <laughs> like, <laughs> I love that. I love that you're saying it's a partnership, right? Like, Absolutely. we're both gonna sit down and figure this out. And even, I'm sure when times aren't great, right? It's like, all right, we're still gonna sit down and figure this out. Because at the end of the day, Absolutely. it's me you. So, yeah. what are we gonna do? Perfect. We're so not right. perfect, but I think that he's my friend. Reggie's legitimately my best friend and um I, I think if anybody gets blessed with that just know that you should definitely prioritize that first I love that so we got another question uh from Stephanie she said how did you find black women help you elevate and help mm. elevate them you know you kind of attract what you're around so I'll say this you have to get comfortable with going to things by yourself like I've gone to many of things by myself because remember, you know, for majority of Reggie and I's relationship, we were long distance. So when I would mm -hmm. move to another city, I would be by myself. Now I will say, I understand, you know, I'm a, a proud lady of Alpha Cap Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Yes. And, you know, that would help. I mean, you know, always getting involved in, in chapter that would help, but also, you know, the urban league, our urban league here in Cincinnati is great. You know, being with young professionals, I've always been a part of NABJ. That's a big national family. And, mm -hmm. you know, just try to see like who's dreaming like you are. Um, you know, when I first joined my church, they had small groups and I literally was, I knew no one in the small group. I was just putting the dart out there. And I love that because I learned how to be vulnerable with other ladies that I just didn't know, especially in this time of my life. So, you know, just don't be afraid to put yourself out there. I, People always are like, Lexi, you're so friendly. But I'm like, because I, I don't have anything to lose. Like, mm -hmm. either I'm going to gain a friend or I will might not gain a friend, but I'll gain something from this acquaintance. And right. I always say I love you regardless. So, I mean, and I think that's really ushered really cool people in my life um, that that's allowed me to get support from other women of color. Man, you're just, so my mom likes to call herself an oracle of optimism, but I feel like that's, that's you too. An oracle of <laughs> Listen here, B. If you don't put that on a t-shirt, I'm going to put it on a t-shirt, and I'm at least going because <laughs> that's good. An oracle of optimism. Ooh, yeah. in our household, we would call that a yummy word. A yummy I love word? Words. <laughs> yeah, my mom loves alliteration, too, so maybe I just need to get her into, like, a shirt business with all these alliterations. <laughs> Come on, somebody. <laughs> so how can people contact you, right, if they want to, like, stay informed on your, on your journey or even, like, connect with you, right? Because they... Um, something it's like when people see something in you right that's like then they always want to connect right that's how I feel too sometimes we have shared experiences it's like yes. let's connect and talk more about it because I feel mm -hmm. like I'm just drawn to you right so how can people can stay connected with you absolutely you know I'm on all social media so I am Alexis Rogers on Instagram hit me up on Facebook you can just put Alexis Rogers and my page will pop up you can always message me that way really active on Twitter as well um I have a website and it is I am AlexisRogers.com, but it's about to change to AlexisRogers.com. Hey. I always bought back my name, girl. I've been trying to do that <laughs> from that girl from North Carolina for like five years. I'm like, girl, you're not doing that with it. It's okay. Just let it go. Um, but yeah, like I, I always love to collaborate with people. I actually have some things up my sleeve. I really want to mm -hmm. just connect with people more. I love doing this. I love doing this. So I have some cool projects coming up within the next couple of months. So I'll be sh glad to share those with you when we get a little bit more into it. But I mean, man, anytime, you know, I'm here. Interviewing the interviewer, right? Like, <laughs> I still got questions for B-Man. Let, let me know. Oh, I my gosh. I need it's, you to make me some money, okay? 
<laughs> I mean, we can connect on to on that too. I was telling, um, or I guess I was thinking about when you were saying buying back your dot com. Like that's something too that people want to learn, right? Like if somebody has your dot com, how can you get it back? And I'm like, shoot, that's a whole little seminar on its or own. Like, what skills do you have? Like I I build websites, and it's like mm-hmm. okay, I stopped, and then like over the quarantine, I took a class to kind of freshen up, and I was like, man, what? How cool would it be if I started to build websites again? You know, I, I consult people for media, like. You, you start to fall into your purpose when it's just things that you're doing because you really want to. You know, mm-hmm. I think after maybe like the 15th time that somebody asked me to come out, I mean, I've, I was training people at PNG because their headquarters are here. I was training people at Chamber of Commerce and I had to sit back and I was like, oh, like this is a skill. Like <laughs> what we're doing here to teach people how to do it and to really live in their truth and to speak out. I love helping people do that. So um, I'm just excited to do it a little bit more in a more purposeful way. I, I had a come to Jesus conversation with myself and the Lord, but we got some work to do. <laughs> Kamaya asked, did you legally change your maiden name? I did. I did. So the reason, and I, actually it's cool, I ask this question a lot to people who are in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, I like separation between the two. You know, we don't have any kids or anything, but I think it's good to have separation between the person that everyone sees on TV because people take ownership of you like when they see you on TV. I, and it's cool to a certain extent, <laughs> but like I can't count how many times like I'll get an email or I'll get a call or like somebody will stop me in the grocery store and be like having a full-fledged conversation with me and I don't know mm-hmm. what they're talking about because y'all got to understand I touch about three stories a day. So this person might be talking to me about a story that happened in like September. And by this And are you doing your own writing, editing, filming and everything? So when I first started off, I did everything myself. Now I find the stories myself and I write them. Oh, okay. Uh, Set up the interviews. And then usually I have a partner that I work with who will edit. Um, But because I have a background in editing, like I have a good idea or I can hop in there when we have to do what we call packages or two news stories in an hour mm-hmm. and I can be on one computer and he can be on another or she can be on Ooh. another. So deadlines are real y'all. I mean, <laughs> my, my day to day is I go to work um, at three thirty in the morning and I usually am live from three to seven, I mean, three thirty to seven, really like four to seven. Then the today show comes on. Usually I'm getting another story ready and then I'm going to get that story, but I also have to leave a story for the nighttime and I have to go live at noon. So, I wow. mean, it's, it's back to back. You, that's how you have to like know it's funny when people see me like in high pressure situations I don't get um I'm very calm and, and pressure because I'm just very focused and mm-hmm. you kind of have to be like that in this in this job so. yeah I mean that's the same thing like you think about horror movies right when people are under pressure like fumbling the keys and everything they're dropping everything right but if you just focus and take your time you might get away from the bad guy <laughs> and stay on your path I'm telling you, and you know, you get a little nervous. Like I remember, I met when I met Oprah. Look, when I, I met, mean, Oprah, I would be nervous too. Listen, first of all, it's Oprah, <laughs> and yes, she does smell like cocoa butter in real life. I was like, absolutely, <laughs> ma'am, absolutely. <laughs> and it, like, I just, I had to like breathe for a second because you know, here it is. This is like an icon. This is like a cultural icon. Yeah. Like, all girls, but like, especially girls of color who are going to, you know, getting into this business. And it's so interesting because there were other reporters there. But she allowed me to ask multiple questions. And like, she took me by, y'all, Oprah, touch this hand right here. Okay. <laughs> she took me by the hand and she told me what makes people great. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you want to see it, you can go ahead and go on my Facebook page. Um, and I have uh, some of the interview there. But I mean, that sort of thing, like, if you can just learn how to like calm yourself and pressure enough to make an opportunity for yourself, mm-hmm. literally the other reporters are like Alexis. It was like, it was just you and her. Like it was a gavel of reporters and she made extra time for me. And I was like, wow, that's, that's power. Mm-hmm. I hope that I get to a point one day where I can do that for somebody. I think you already <laughs> are. Right. You have been since <laughs> high school. Alexis. Oh my goodness. Probably <laughs> even before that, you probably came out the womb, just spitting, spitting knowledge to the babies in the baby, oh, in the Lord. little baby room. Like, look, y'all, I think this best is what self. happens when a new baker <laughs> is like your favorite. You just feel wise, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so what advice would you give to people that are trying to like pursue their passion or, or, you know, find their purpose, right? Like what advice yeah. would you give them right now? You know, I would tell them one, you know, ask yourself, what makes me have joy? Like, I don't want you to just be happy. I want you to have joy, right? And then two, figure out, like, be be a life learner. 
you know like if you're not willing to spend time learning and doing things new like then what you doing you know like what I love to mentor mentoring is not a job for me I, I feel mm -hmm. like it's a calling for me I love I love each one of my mentees like they're a sister of mine you know I teach them what I wish my mother could have been able to teach me mm -hmm. and vice versa I'm still being taught by people and so understanding like what in your life are you like wow I learned that so like what can I help other people do there's one thing that I always tell my mentees is to back time so what I mean we use this um this this notion in the business but think about like if my deadline for instance, is at five o'clock, right? That means that my story needs to be in the system by four o'clock. Okay. That means that I probably need to be finished writing by two o'clock. So that way from two to three, you get where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. I can go ahead and do what I got to do. So that means, oh man, that's by two o'clock and I got to do two stories. That means that from 12 to one thirty, like, am I traveling during that time? Like you have to think about where you want to go and backtrack from that and say, what do I have to do to get there? That's your you preparation. <laughs> Because if you're just trying to figure it out, like I was talking to a college student um, this week and she just graduated and, and all the graduates out there, I'm one, I'm so proud of y'all. I'm so proud of y'all. Yes, right. And two, it is scary for anybody to get out and try to like look for a job, um, especially for our first generation college students. I feel for them. You and know? now during quarantine too, right? It's exactly. a whole different playing field. So things look different. And I asked her and I said, have you what is it that you like want to do? Like, what do you have joy in doing? And she kept telling me all these things that she learned how to do. And I said, okay, I love that. Make that list. But let's backtrack. What did you have the most joy doing and how do you get there? And she actually just texted me this morning and um, she has two interviews at two radio stations and she realized she really likes the production aspect of it. But it took us to actually like sit down and be like, okay. And I told her, I said, I don't know. I don't care what you're going to do. But you also have to be willing to have different trades so that way you can have multiple sources of income. Yes. You know, journalism looks really, really, like, glamorous. But a lot of per people's first paychecks are super low. Like, I was blessed. And I still, I, I wouldn't live on that now for what I was making before. But, like, I know people who were out here signing 18, 19, $20,000 contracts for a year. Whoa. Oh. Oh, is yes. that like a, a on average? You know, it just depends out? on where you start in the company that you start in. And so, you know, unfortunately, I feel like sometimes in school, they they teach you how to do the job, but they're not teaching you how to really live and start to build wealth. And that's mm -hmm. something that I've really become very passionate about. And, you know, again, that would be a whole nother live mm -hmm. with us about how to build wealth because not everybody has mommy and daddy. Not everybody. I've ne I have not lived with my parents since I was 19 years old. I've been on my own paying my own bills since I was 19. So I get that. So like not everybody has that chunk of money to put towards something else. But I guarantee you, especially with some of the things I've recently learned, there are other ways for you to set yourself up so that way you could be financially independent. Mm -hmm. The guy yesterday was just talking about like business lines of credit, personal lines of credit, using other people's money, right? learning valuable skills to even just get your money up. And I'm just like, you Absolutely. need that, that group around you who's like a little knowledge, who's knowledgeable and who can like mm -hmm. put you on, right? And Absolutely. be in the right mental space. And, and I mean, you just, I mean, you dropping the gems already. So <laughs> I don't even got to say it. But, I'm just saying, I'm just trying to be hired by Britney's ATM, y'all. Please, please. Or even Man, like supporting. I'm, I'm trying to. If you want to be supported, support. Like, you know, even like I look yeah. at the shirt that I have on today. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it says I am enough. And my, my best friend, Brandis, that's that. her brand. Like I always, you cannot ask people for support and you don't support them. And I'm not saying like always dishing the money. Maybe you don't have it. Look, I understand groceries are real and they cost American dollars. Okay. But mm -hmm. like what type, where are you spending your time? I used to make my mentees do a 24 hour log. Uh -huh. I said for seven days. And we would color code it. And I said, I want to know where each one of your hours of the day is going. Because I guarantee you wow. have more time than you think you do. And every time they found out that they had more time. And in that time, they created businesses. They created plans. They created so much more because they realized and they were focused that they have more time. You have to give your time purpose just like you give your money purpose, right? That's a good exercise for everybody, right? To just mm -hmm. see like how are you, especially during quarantine, where are all your hours going towards? Is it, is it yes. sleeping? Is it watching Netflix? Is it creating a business plan? Whatever you want, because you can always optimize, right? But you have to do an assessment of what you're doing first. And a lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Wow. So what are, and I, I don't know how much time, I think we got like maybe four or five minutes left. Yeah, I don't know. But Girl, it's been on here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I like to round out these lives. If we have extra time, I'll ask you something after. But who's being great in your life, right? Who's influencing you and pushing you um, to just be great and continue your success, right? Or who's holding it down for you? You know, besides um, Reggie. <laughs> I know. I know. Reggie's really, really great. You know, my friends, my sisters, you know, even though I'm the oldest, I learn something from them all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, my baby sister is like a little mini genius. She's going to be the next CSI, everything. Okay. You're a guy straight A's. I was like, look, praise God. All right. Make them pay for it. Okay. Right. And then my other sister is such an entrepreneur and she's so creative. And I think that the beauty of our relationship is that as the, the more I understand how to meet them where they're at, the more mm-hmm. I understand how to learn from them. And that's really been inspiring me a lot lately. Um, and just really getting into inspirational people. I love my pastor, my pastor, Eric Petrie. I go to City Gate Church. And shy, he'd be preaching his face off. I'd be like, Pastor Eric, Ooh, that was fire. He'd be like, just give me the little fire emoji. I'd be like, you got me. Um, you know, I know a lot of people find inspiration with like Pastor Michael Todd and a couple other people. Like, I mm-hmm. love that. Share that. Like, it's wealth like just share it i i can right. never get enough of inspiration and what are your goals what do you what are you trying to do in the next couple of years absolutely i want to you know I, I would love to make my give back brand bigger i would love to story tell um with my own branding as well i, I always tell other people's stories and i i would love to let those come to life in a, a little bit more of an interactive way so I'm, mm-hmm. I'm working on that as well um and just and looking at things that i enjoy i i'm now no longer afraid to be great in multiple areas mm-hmm. like i'm now no longer finding my identity in what i do more so in who i impact so wow. I think that that's been a really good thing and I'm really excited to see how that grows. I love that. Man, you dropping so so much knowledge. I'm just like writing all this stuff down. I'm like, ooh, got my Twitter fingers going. (laughs) (laughs) I love that. And I'm so appreciative. I don't know how much time we got, so I don't want to ask you too many questions, but I really appreciate, you know, you being transparent, showcasing your journey, right? And talking about all the emotional and mental parts that go into that and just you being so philanthropic and giving back at like such a young age. And I, it's funny, I used to think right uh, prior to these lives that not a lot of people are giving back and like mm. also pushing forward. But now that I am doing these lives, I'm seeing people that are, they're doing both, right? So it's like, man, sometimes people give, you know, they, they do to our millennials because like, you know, they feel like we're not giving back. But yeah. I think we are, right? We are um, sowing seeds in the people. I think it's just, we're all doing it in our own ways, right? We're not all doing well, it on just like this very national level all the time. Absolutely. Well, think about it. How, if your pot is always full, how do you replenish it? So you got to mm-hmm. give, you got to give. I mean, even with uh, this Dave Ramsey course that we took, you know, we tied the entire time. We've been, we are really devout on tithing our 10% and we did not miss a payment. Not only did we not miss a payment, but we still paid off more debt than we would have before. When you bless other people, you allow yourself to get more blessed. And I think that that's been a lesson that even I have been learning in different aspects of my life. I love that. Man, we can talk for like five (laughs) hours, just a minute, a minute remaining. There's so many other things I would love to touch on, but I really appreciate you coming on this live, Alexis. I'm so proud of you, B. Thank you. I'm proud of you. I'm watching you. I'm over here like, I told you, I was like, I need to come to Cincinnati and come pull up. Come on. It's fun. (laughs) After the quarantine, of course. (laughs) Yes. Yes. After the quarantine. Uh, But I appreciate you. I appreciate everyone too. That's like asking all your questions, right. And logging in and giving all like the positive praise. Right. I love that on these lives, people are like praising and being like, yes, you know, you're doing that dropping gems because everybody's learning. So I I love it. I love it. it. If you have questions, hit me up, direct message me, any of that. I would love to talk to you. Awesome. And so I'll save this. I'll upload it to YouTube and I'll shoot you the link, Alexis. Remember y'all, stay encouraged. Stay. Yes. I love that.